All right, in this section, we're gonna start covering mortars. Mortars are gonna fire in a way that's very similar to what we've talked about before, as in conducting HE or AP attacks, although you can tell by this 81 millimeter counter that I have sitting here that they only have an HE attack. However, their HE attack can affect hard targets. They're one of the few that it can actually do so. Now, when mortars fire, they're going to fire at a hex, not a specific unit. So all units that are in the hex will be affected by the attack that the mortar conducts. Mortars can also take and conduct attacks in their line of sight, or they can be called in by an HQ or a recon unit to conduct indirect uh, attacks out of their line of sight. Let's talk about within their line of sight first. Taking as our example here of this 81 millimeter mortar, let's say it's firing at this infantry, you're gonna conduct the attack very similar to what we've talked about previously. Do keep in mind though that mortars have their range underlined, so this means that they do not benefit from extended or reduced range, none of those apply to them. So even if they are firing at what would be considered reduced range, they would not affect their to hit number when conducting their attacks. Now let's say this 81 millimeter wants to fire at this Russian infantry. We can see their firepower is two and their to hit number is a five. So they would simply roll two dice and compare it to their to hit number. Let's say they rolled a five and a six, so they get two hits. Now, the units being attacked are going to determine their defensive role, just like a soft target would that's suffering an attack. In this case, we do have a soft target in the hex. There are no bonuses to be provided to it, so they would get no defensive role. However, if there's a hard target in the hex, so let's say this SU-152 is also in the hex, a hex that has a hard target being attacked by a mortar gets a bonus of 1d6 on top of its defensive roll. So in this situation, they would have 1d6 to roll. So let's say they roll their 1d6 and get a 4. Well, just like a soft target conducting their defensive rolls, you need a 5 or a 6 to take and get a success. So this would not be a success, and in our situation, this hex would suffer two hits that will be distributed as evenly as possible between the units that are in the hex. So in this case, both units would take and suffer a disruption. Something to keep in mind though, so let's say our hex that's being attacked does not have infantry in it, it just has a hard target. Let's say we have the same situation, two hits, the defensive roll doesn't succeed, the hard target, in this case the SU-152, would suffer two hits, but since they can't suffer more than a disruption from a mortar, they would only be affected once, they would just take the disruption, they would not be reduced. Also, you will not be looking at their defensive number, their armor value, when taking an attack by a mortar. You would just determine the amount of dice they would roll as if they were infantry in the hex but a single hard target would still get the 1d6 for being a hard target in a mortar targeted hex. Okay, so let's take and change things up a little bit and bring our mortar back here behind the city and say it's conducting its attack. In this case, it could because the HQ located here could give line of sight and call it in. This would be during HQ's formation's activation and would count as one of its fire missions for that activation. You would conduct the attack the same way that I just described in an indirect uh, attack mode. You would still have to be within range. You can't take and use the mortar outside of its effective range. And once it was completed with its attack, it would again be marked with an ops complete. Now, how, the difference between mortar attacks and an artillery fire emission is that again, the mortar attack will only affect a single hex. It does not affect the six surrounding hexes like a mortar a artillery attack would, and you don't have to range the attack like you would a artillery attack. One last thing to note when it comes to conducting attacks with mortars is that mortars do have the ability to call in smoke missions. Generally, one uh, level one smoke, sometimes level two, your scenario booklet will tell you and they can be called in the same way as 
conducting an actual attack, except you're not going to have a defensive roll. You're just rolling to see if they hit. So let's say our mortar back here wanted to take and put smoke in one of these hexes blocking off the SU-152, it could do so with the HQ calling it in like a fire mission, counting against its fire emissions, just like conducting a normal uh, attack with the mortar. If it rolled, since it has a firepower of two, it again would roll two dice. If it rolled its to hit number on either one of the dice, it would be a hit and you would place the smoke. You can do, uh, do the same thing if the mortar is in line of sight, it conduct a line of sight smoke laying, and it can also lay smoke in its own hex if it wishes to do so.